I'm going to introduce you to the Academy Clock subdivision surface and compare it to uh, the simple subdivision surface using the plane, uh, which is the mesh, the plane, and compare it to a smooth mode and to a wireframe mode. The first one I need to get to start here, and first I need to click for the edit mode, and once I click that and, sh and I just select that 20 polygons, let me bring it down in the plane a little bit. As you can see, so you can see uh, that looks like a mountain uh, when I bring it down. And it's showing off for the six polygons and four vertices and four edges at the top of the uh, six polygons. So for the first time, I'm going to make a comparison between the wireframe and the flat uh, subdivision surface into the mesh. It looks uh, kind of look flat, so once again, I turn on for the add-on modifier mode. And then I have to click for the subdivision surface. It changes the key for the showing off for the camera clock the surface first. So bring, let me to bring you down in zero for starting point. And once I see for the increase in the value, it shows up. So it's not showing the vertices. It's actually the arbitrary topology for uh, polygons and a number of uh, vertices and edges that are collapsing and some of sort of like that. The Gatamon Clock subdivision surface is actually uh, useful for the compensation easily for the GPU standard. So that is why the people who are working on the Pixar use the feature that called the Gatamon Clock subdivision surface and that is uh, a very useful uh, feature adaptive. If I turn on it into simple mode, if I make it easy for the view increasing value, it's not actually going to make it smoother. When you turn off the Gatamon Clock surface, it's actually a very big difference uh, when you're to compare for a simple mode subdivision adaptive surfaces. So once I increase the value, it's adding more polygons to make it it's even smoother than the simple subdivision. So the GPU is actually not a lagging up. It's actually the easily the composition by the smoother of the number of the geometry details. In addition, we have a curve that located in the, in the middle of the plane, which is the high density area. The very most important thing about the Catmull clock subdivision surface, you need to add up to subdivision more more polygons as well. It's extremely dense. As you can see, uh, when I turn on to the edit mode, the local max is going to increase as well. Again, the vertices is not actually uh, showing up, but the vertices is actually uh, controlling some of, by the Catmull clock subdivision surface. Well, let me come back over here for the edit mode for a second. And once you can see, some of the number of the faces is actually uh, kind of a crashing polygons when it comes to the program. So I'm going to show you how do you decimate it into which is uh, actually what but I mean by decimated is just reducing your polygons which is I'm gonna have to click for the ratio let's say I have to make it uh, even lower as you can see some of a changing shape uh, a little bit when you click apply it makes it reducing some of the polygons and I apply it again and it make it uh, decreasing the value it's uh, making uh, different shapes once that I decimate it again it makes it even lower and really uh, decreasing the number of the polygons and it makes it changing the shape careful with the uh, decimating the polygons because uh, it's going to make it uh, collapsing the polygons something like this which is a uh, very messed up so anyway, this is how you doing for the Catmull Clock subdivision surface, and this is uh, how you are reducing the decimating the number of the geometry details, which is the faces, vertices, and polygons of the mesh.